Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today, a tale of two days out there with regular trading hours looking very different than after hours. I'll let you know what is causing the significant dump after hours and where that makes us stand bigger picture. So here is why we're seeing some after hours weakness. Facebook is down a monster amount on earnings. We dropped down 25% essentially down to that low. That being said, surprisingly, I thought there would be a lot more longer term damage on this chart. And we can see support here of 244. We bounced right above that level. And granted, it's a huge pullback, but still long term higher lows are being set here. It just opens up a whole bunch of space for some long term lower highs to be the result of the next bounce. But with that drop, again, it's a, a tale of two completely different days because QQQ here after hours dumping big time and down under the low of the day after the Bulls played defense all day and did a really good job. So I'm going to be talking about the review, pretty much how the day set up, how it played out, and then after hours, what we're looking at now for the rest of the week from here. So started the morning looking bearish, and we had a number of names looking at our third gap up open in a row, QQQ being one of them. One gap up, two gap up, third gap up open in a row. We know that shows us bull exhaustion to the upside, and it's a bearish reversal pattern to be keeping an eye out on. NVDA was another name that had a third gap up open today. It's down $7 after hours. So third gap up open and seems to be shaping up daily consolidation. So knowing that we're looking for daily consolidation was one reason I'm looking bearish. And another reason was, okay, I look... I know I'm looking bearish and then I look around for other clues. And so here on Twitter this morning, I talked about the VIX and the dollar. So I know I'm scouting bearish and I'm looking around for clues to affirm that viewpoint. And I know the dollar bouncing is potentially something that can lead to, or can be a part of broader market consolidation. I looked at the hourly RSI pre-market and I saw we were down at under 17. So we were in the 16s. And I go back historically and I say, okay, when have we been bouncing? What are our historical bounce levels? I see we got down to 19 and bounced, 16 and bounced, some of the more extreme times, 15 and bounced. So I can see any time in the last year, we have bounced from this point. So it's a historical bounce level. Okay, I'm anticipating that the dollar is going to see an hourly oversold bounce this morning. I then went to the VIX. I don't use the VIX at all in my trading. Today I did just a wee bit. It wasn't make or break here, but I looked at the VIX and I saw the four hour RSI. And this morning that four hour RSI was down at about 33. And I look back historically the last year, where do we bounce? I can see the most extreme that it gets, 29. We bounce from another 29, a lot of bounces from the low 30s. But you can just see, we don't really drop under oversold four hour RSI much. It definitely can happen. But again, looking at the last year, pretty much a bounce zone. So if the VIX is gonna bounce with the dollar, I know that it likely means that the market is going to pull back. So the bell rings and we pull back all morning and SPY is in a five minute downtrend and QQQ on the five minute chart was in a downtrend on the morning. I had a, a swing position, a small swing position in SQQQ and that really started me off on the wrong foot because I was in the red on the morning because of that position. And it was Google's earnings after hours that led to this strong open in the markets. And so that SQQQ position opened solidly in the red. So I spent the day chasing that in the sense that, you know, I was just looking to get back to break even. And I ended the day up maybe 5% of a day maker. So tiny green day, pretty much flat, but it was offsetting the red in SQQQ. I added to that SQQQ position on this five minute bounce. I was live streaming at that point in time, just to clear top fish play, V-shaped bounce, no five minute trend change, stick my, make my entry, stick my stop over the high. I didn't nail the top, but it was close enough. Sold half on this initial pullback and now I'm risk-free in an added position. So now I've got more size. Okay, so on this pullback, we know we're looking for a bounce. Why do we know we're looking for a bounce? Because anything over, 361.39 is an hourly higher low. So I'm bearish looking for daily consolidation, but I know an hourly bounce is more likely than not to take place rather than just rolling over. We're not just going to roll over and dump. And looking at the futures charts, the S&P 500, it looked a lot like yesterday. We were just looking for a four hour higher low. 
And the NASDAQ, same thing, just looking for a four hour, at that point in time, a four hour higher low and EMA 12 was support. So, okay, I'm in my bear position and I started red, but now down at the low of the day, it's gotten back to a winning position. Then from there, I know an hourly bounce is more likely than not. So I chose NIO to play the bounce and didn't get a great fill, didn't get the ideal scenario that I wanted. I made an initial entry in the 2340s and I said, all right, I will add to a second position here if 23 breaks. And of course we bounced off 2301, so I didn't add my second position. If I had, it would have been a solid win. But because I didn't, it was only a half position and it ended up being a win. I sold half in the 2360s and half in the 2380s. So a win, but nothing very notable. Essentially all that win did was offset while SQQ is bouncing, or I should say while QQQ is bouncing, my SQQQ position is now going back towards the red, but I got a little bit of gains in NIO's bounce to offset that a bit. So then, okay, I did a good job offsetting the hourly bounce in QQQ. So now our hourly higher low is set at the low of the day and we're bouncing and now we're scouting an hourly lower high, anything under the high of pre-market. And if the bears were gonna prove it to us, we needed to confirm that hourly downtrend and close weak. And then we would say, okay, daily consolidation is shaping up. And we did it, the bulls held on. They held on just fine. And so then my SQQQ position went back into the red on this bounce. And so again, I went from a small red day at the start, small green day on SQQQ being strong when QQQ was at the low of the day. And then towards the end of the day, I'm just back to break even. It's a nothing day for me. And I ended up swinging not a full size SQQQ position, but the same position that I swung. So it hurt me this morning and now it's helping me here and I've got my day maker after hours and I locked in half of the SQQQ that I swung and I will swing half for potential further daily consolidation but everything changed on this drop because now we have an hourly confirmed downtrend on the NASDAQ and so now we look at the four hour time frame and now we're creating space for a four hour lower high to be the result of the next bounce. And the S&P 500 is not as beat up because the financial sector has been strong. It's still a four hour uptrend, but it was a bull break with a lack of follow through. So we're shaping up daily consolidation and daily consolidation started in growth names already today. Crypto was showing us weakness in the morning, but then we saw the biotech sector was very weak today. MJ sector very weak. So while this was all going on and the bulls were holding on in QQQ and in SPY, clearly we were weak in XBI growth, IWM was weak and the sectors I just mentioned. So those names are already starting daily consolidation. So what are we looking at from here? We're looking at SPY needing to break the low of today, tomorrow, 453, which is, we're right there, pre, we're right there after hours right now, we're a bit above it. But if we break that low, daily consolidation is underway. What do we look for once daily consolidation is underway? Well, we've got a ton of space for a daily higher low. And we're going to be watching for hourly oversold conditions. And we can see SPY is not close to hourly oversold. But if we break 453, drop down towards the 450 level, then that hourly RSI will be approaching oversold. So if I'm looking for a daily higher low, an aggressive bull is looking to play an hourly oversold bounce, is looking to sell partial on the hourly oversold bounce, Set your stop under that low. You either nail the daily higher low or the hourly bounce cools off RSI and drops to a lower low and you stop out break even. That's my style of trading. That's probably how I'm going to approach things. A patient bull is going to wait for a big enough hourly bounce. They're going to miss the hourly bounce and they're going to say, okay, that's a big enough hourly bounce where I'm going to scout. Let's just say we See daily consolidation begin, hourly oversold bounce takes place. All right, that's a big enough bounce. I'm gonna enter on an hourly higher low, put my stop under the low to this point. And if we confirm the hourly trend change, our daily higher low is shaping up. So there is an aggressive approach and a conservative approach for pretty much every setup. And determining which you wanna be is the number one, the number two question. Number one question, which direction are you looking? Number two question, are you aggressive or conservative? Aggressive or conservative, determines which time frame you're looking on, aggressive looking on shorter term time frames, and it also determines the style of trade you take. Am I playing that oversold bounce scaling in, or am I waiting for a big enough bounce to play the high or low to have a clear stop level to play off of? Two completely different styles, I do both. So 
So very clear sentiment shift. Sentiment shift to the bulls kicked off by Apple earnings. Now it's a sentiment shift to the bears on Facebook earnings. Let's see how Amazon goes tomorrow. That's going to potentially tilt the scale, you know, as to who gets more love, the bulls or the bears, on earnings reactions this week. But daily consolidation is potentially shaping up. Bears still have proving to do. And again, tons of space for a daily higher low. The daily higher low is absolutely the most likely scenario. And unless we see increasing bear volume, we're going to gauge our retracement size. I'm going to be looking at retracement size from our daily higher low. How much do we pull back? We can pull back to 446 and still be a potential daily bull flag. So it's definitely not game over for the bulls at this point, unless we see big time bear volume that will have us say, okay, maybe this is something more serious. Maybe this is our weekly lower high being set. I personally am in the weekly equilibrium school of thought. That is the team that I'm on as far as what I'm looking for for the most likely scenario. I think we're going to trade within this range all of February or most of February. And what am I looking at to gauge that? Yes, I've seen SPY pull back in V-shape to a higher high plenty of times. But I'm looking back at, at September and October 2020, where we had this pullback that was a total of roughly 11%, 10, 11%. We bounced very significantly. That's a 70% plus bounce retracement. We set a lower high. We pull back for the higher low. And we traded within that range for over a month. So I'm watching for something very similar. And it doesn't mean that's what we're going to get. But that is my mindset of what I am determining is the most likely scenario. And now I'm zooming in on the daily time frame and the hourly time frame. And I'm watching for the clues. Is the volume declining? which would increase probabilities that this is the most likely scenario. There's all kinds of clues that I'm going to be looking at on a daily basis. And every single day, my probability is going to shift as to whether I'm correct in looking for a weekly equilibrium or not. We won't be confident that a weekly lower high is being set unless we lose daily higher lows. And we know we're not likely to lose daily higher lows on this next pullback. What we would need to see would be a big enough pullback for bears to then scout a daily lower high top fish play on the bounce and then lose the uptrend. And QQQ is the same thing, just a different version being slightly weaker and the daily consolidation is likely to start now if we break 364.29, which were $2 and change under at the moment. So very likely to see daily consolidation underway. And again, unless it's increasing bear volume, notable increasing bear volume, we're going to anticipate a daily higher low Anything above 337.95. And it is QQQ weaker than SPY because of XLF and XLV. Healthcare had a good day today. So here's healthcare, big green day. We know we're looking for a weekly lower high in healthcare as well. What's our bounce retracement size at this point? Looks like about 50% on the money. In the financial sector, nice follow through. Scouting the weekly lower high here as well. Retracement size is golden pocket, 62% or so. So at this point in time, I would say that our lead bull sector is the financial sector at the moment. And healthcare is number two. And QQQ is number three. Retracement size for the Qs, it's pretty much the same as healthcare. But obviously, the weakness after hours is specific to QQQ and not to healthcare. Actually, healthcare is up after hours, interestingly enough. Semiconductors. So AMD had a bullish earnings reaction. Semiconductors are dropping with QQQ after hours. The low of today is going to be in play tomorrow. If that low of today breaks tomorrow, daily consolidation underway. We're not in an uptrend. Big bounce, breaking daily resistance, sure creating space for a daily higher low. But until we see the daily higher low and higher high, the bulls have not proven enough for us to be confident that they're back in control. And that's the case now for a lot of names. It's the case for SMH. Tesla daily lower high set right off EMA 12. This is the inverse head and shoulders I was talking about the last couple of videos. So if we can hold the low of 792 and then bull break of 944, that confirms the daily trend change. If daily EMA 12 remains resistance on Tesla, the bears remain in complete control. But the daily consolidation has started. What's our hourly RSI? 
close to oversold. It might be oversold in play tomorrow. NIO, daily lower high set right off EMA 12. Keeping an eye out for hourly oversold tomorrow to scout a daily higher low. Again, only the most aggressive bulls are looking to play those oversold bounces to try and position for the daily higher low. But again, an example, let's just say we are getting to hourly oversold and it's tomorrow, regular trading hours, and we drop down and the hourly RSI is oversold and the 15 minute and the five minute are oversold as well. I make an initial scale and entry at 2260. I make a second entry at 2230. I put my stop under 22 psychological. We get a bounce going on the hourly. The hourly oversold bounce starts going. It bounces up to 2280. I sell half right there. What was my average? 45, sell at 80. So my average is now 2210. And I could stick my stop at break even at 2210 and hope it's enough for an hourly trend change for the daily high or low. And if I'm wrong, I don't lose a penny. That is my style of trading. I'm not saying I'm going to do that. It all depends on where we stand tomorrow and how everything looks, but that's a potential that will be on the table. And it's also the kind of thing, maybe I just keep my half SQQQ and that would make me more comfortable trying to play hourly oversold bounces if I know I've got that short position with a bigger picture daily consolidation mindset in case I'm wrong. IWM, so we broke resistance, but not much follow through. And if the low of today breaks tomorrow to 199.29, then daily consolidation's underway. Have to confirm the trend change. We have not done so yet. The bulls have proving to do in semiconductors in the biotech sector, in IWM, XBI, rejected from daily resistance, double top, and then failed today first thing. That was, in hindsight, that was the play. I need to get back into the biotech sector. I've, I've swayed away from the biotech sector the last two days, but there have been some nice bear plays off that resistance. I need to get back into the biotech sector. Mental note for myself. But again, the same inverse head and shoulders here, where if we hold the low, and confirm the daily trend change, the bounce will be looking for some follow through. Burden is on the bulls for XBI, SMH, Tesla, and all these names. Burden is on the bears for the S&P 500 and for our major sectors that have seen such significant bounces. MSOS has not started daily consolidation, but certainly a pullback day today. We look at Canadian MJ name, CGC, very weak day, daily inside bar, and we will scout a daily high or low if the inside bar breaks bare. So overall, the main takeaways, bulls won the day. As far as I'm concerned, bulls won the day. They lost after hours, thanks to Facebook absolutely dumping. And we're now shaping up for some daily consolidation to take place that has already started in the weaker growther sectors and individual names. Growther, did I just say that? In the weaker growth sectors and individual names, daily consolidation has already started. And now that consolidation will see further pullback if the broader market starts its consolidation as well. So really liking how things are going. Things have been nice and clear on a daily basis, looking in the right direction, pinpointing hourly moves fairly well. So hoping that keeps up. Not many fake outs and not a whole lot of being wrong. And when I am wrong, it is just stopping out with break even or small losses, which is the name of the game. All right, I hope you're well. Don't forget to do good things, and we'll see how much oomph the bears have. Appreciate you watching. Do some good things out there in the world, and we'll see you over the weekend.